a very good evening and a very warm welcome at infosec train uh, so it is our day two guys for our SOC blueprint from reactive to proactive a CISO awareness program uh, we which we have initiated and my name is Bharat and again I will be a speaker for today which is our last day and we will be just picking off the topics where we have left off so so we will be talking about lots of important part from a decision maker point of view from a CISO point of view which will be helping us in order to uh, understand in order to determine what things are there so yesterday we have discussed about SOC why do we need it traditional versus modern SOC what are the must have capabilities all these parts now today we will be talking the increasing attack surface right understanding the correct uh, like current threat landscape how it is basically changing evolving, right and then learning how to prioritize the threats security strategies and architecture all these things we will be talking about over here and in this part we will be also discussing about the terms the things which are important from a managerial perspective in or in terms of automation and then that's how we will be concluding our part so talking about the attack surface area the attack surface the increasing attack surface which is being uh, evolved now like if i do talk about just last five years trends lots of things have been changed drastically right so as we all do know that attack surface basically that's an entry point that attackers can use to get inside your system or a network right so it, it basically includes everything I would say from a physical access to your system vulnerabilities in your software uh, system vulnerabilities or vulnerabilities in your software or firmware right and attack surface is constantly expanding why why it is expanding due to number of factors because we are growing right and uh, when uh, when we are growing the number of uh, connected devices are basically now growing now there are billions of devices connected to the internet if i do talk about right and each of its basically own potential uh, would have own potential vulnerabilities right and with this complexity of softwares right all the modern softwares which i do talk about even uh, i was just reading the news uh, over there about nvidia and how nvidia basically in 2018 took the AI side and they have basically created already the AI powered GPUs so it's not just the softwares I do talk about it's our hardware also which is basically getting more and more complex these days which could have more vulnerabilities right in like if I do talk about increased use we all have basically seen that especially after this pandemic shifting towards the cloud platform is one of the necessity now it's not an option that you have to do or not but it has now become a necessity isn't it so the increasing uh, increase in using of cloud computing and via cloud computing of course new attack vectors have been grown up new vulnerabilities have been came up in your on-prem applications infrastructure in your cloud applications infrastructure so these type of targeted attacks have been grown right and attackers are basically targeting nowadays they are basically targeting specific organizations or i would say specific individuals with the attack that are tailored to their specific vulnerabilities right so attackers earlier basically attackers were running a campaign in that campaign they were basically doing a mass attack but now they have shifted their focus to the specific attacks and specific attacks are being done on these specific vulnerabilities right that's why uh, from the security point of view cyber kill chain basically has become one of the most important aspects right so when we do talk about a cyber kill chain it does help us to understand the attacks timeline uh, as per our environment as per our own environment so targeted uh, which can basically take up on these targeted attacks right so this increasing attack surface basically has brought up definitely it has brought up a significant challenge to the organization and it's not basically only the fortune 500 or 2000 organizations are basically uh, targeted but i would say 
organization of all sizes are basically having a significant challenge to this increasing attack surface right so in uh, basically let's say in order to base, uh, protect the organization nowadays what we can do is we can basically create more of a holistic approach right where we can basically include all the aspects of security in order to basically reduce our attack surface so we could have lots of things lots of things so i have included few of them email identity endpoint iot cloud external right then there can be lot of them though i have just pointed out couple of them up over here there can be physical security there can be basically internal threats then there can be uh, network security application security data security so lot of things to talk upon right so my agenda for keeping this six points is because by taking holistic approach to security right organizations definitely can reduce their attack surface and can protect themselves from these ever changing or ever growing cyber attacks i believe mostly all of you might be aware about there are tools uh, in our premises like attack surface analyzer right so we can use those tools to identify the attack surface area available with every onboarded asset in our environment right so that is something which can help you apart from it any sort of security solution which you are implementing in order to protect your sensitive data from being uh, unauthorized access from disclosure or destruction so that is something which can be quite good enough right so holistic approach basically from the management perspective if i do talk about there are number of things which can be done right in order to basically address the increasing attack surface the very first thing which i will say up over here apart from the list which you see over here that invest in the security awareness and training for your employees right employees are often the weakest links in the security chain of the organization and security awareness training can help the employees to basically identify and report any sort of suspicious activities or to avoid clicking on malicious links or to open any sort of infected attachments right so these are basically few uh, one of the things very major things very basic niche but very major things which one can apply over the organizations chart apart from it if i do talk about again one more basic thing implement layered security right so no single security control can protect us right so we do know already do, do know defense in depth so that is one thing and the next thing of defense in depth we do already do have zero trust right so that is something which can help the organization now apart from that if i do talk about these six pointers right so these are the six major areas of the organization to manage right since we are basically becoming more connected and, and digital as i said right so cyber security is becoming more complex and organization are moving to more infrastructure more data more applications to the cloud right and uh, since these things are basically moving around and is basically being increasing even your remote working as i said yesterday also and today also now we do have multiple third parties for uh, we, it's basically now a, a third party ecosystem as well right we have to engage with third parties for multiple different things right so with all these there is one thing which is uh which is to be basically followed by a security team always that is your def, uh, security team must now defend the broader aspect right the expanded aspect the more dynamic environment of yours and the expanded set of attack surfaces so because attackers are taking advantage of this complexity which we have created for our ease of access for our better functionality for our uh, i would say moreover importance or moreover usefulness for our day to day uh, task right for our day to day task for the usefulness of those particular task but attackers are, attackers are basically targeting this complexity they are exploiting the gaps in the organization's protection and permissions and then basically they are uh, executing a high volume of attacks or relentless attacks i would say on an organization so attacks basically can be multi phase 
so let's say attackers basically can uh, have several elements of the organization's operation and infrastructure with them and then attackers can basically become more coordinated like more than one attacker can join the mission in order to attack the organization so there is basically one figure uh, which uh, was there in the first quarter of 2023 uh, there is basically one unit of microsoft that is digital crimes unit so only that unit specifically have logged 27 lakh 50 thousand sites which were being registered i'm just talking about first quarter so these particular numbers so these were the sites which were being registered by the threat actors or criminal actors and they were planning to basically use them in order to go for cyber crimes multiple different types of cyber crimes so email identity endpoint cloud and external these are quite important factors and in fact i would say these are basically something which in order to understand your attack surface you should understand them as a basic security hygiene so if i do talk about email of course email uh, for me email always remains on the top as a threat vector and uh, it is basically one of the major focus area of defense for the organization because email is the essential part of your daily business operations and attackers basically it remains again on the top of the threat actors list in order to attack there were 35% of ransomware incidents last year to this year have been increased 35% we have seen the up, up, upwards in terms of ransomware incidents that have in, involved the use of emails attackers are basically carrying out more email attacks than ever before in 2023 and even the rate of phishing attacks have been increased by 61% as compared to 2022 so this is something which is very alarming very con- uh, very alarming for us and very concerning because attackers be, uh, are actually now leveraging this particular one common feature uh, of your organization's business operation that is emails to carry out phishing attacks right and with time it is basically make, becoming more and more difficult yesterday i have given you an example of deep fake so it is basically becoming more and more difficult for the users to differentiate the real and the malicious email right and the increasing of this uh, this uh, phishing emails basically is a constant alarm for us to basically look into the email as a broader category in terms of security incidents so that is one of the major factors which we should cover emails so what we can do in order to basically stop these type of uh, phishing attacks email attacks or specifically if i do talk about uh, business email compromise i do have one data uh, that is not relevant to 2023 but it was from past year but with that number we can make a guess uh, what it could have been uh, this year so last year there were uh, basically business email compromise total business email compromise across there was one organization who have collected this data so it uh, the business email uh, uh, compromise cost an estimated of 2.4 billions in adjusted losses in 2022 so this is basically one data now you can see that how where it would have been this year as of now there are no stats but definitely uh, few of the organizations might be working on it they might release it in the last quarter of the year so url checking disabling macros employees educations have become the essential part to prevent these type of threats and the impact of these type of phishing emails because no matter what sort of technology you do have if your humans are not being trained well they will click and once they will click it will basically impact your organization then the next one is identity if i do talk about the expanded identity landscape have also expanded opportunities for the attacker so that's our attack surface have been increased in terms of identity and in this cloud enabled world today securing access 
has been uh, become more critical than ever. So identity across your organizations, including your user account permissions, your workload identities, their potential vulnerabilities are quite vital for the organization because it uh, attacks basically increase in frequency of creative in frequency of these particular identity based attacks. And if I do talk about number of password attacks. There is basically one number which I uh, when I researched about this topic, uh, I did found it out almost 900 plus. Password attacks are being done every second in 2023 first quarter. And that is basically a 74% increase to what we were having in 2022. So multi-factor authentication using basically uh, is basically one of the more uh, like we have also seen multi-factor authentication that threat actors basically get more creative in order to bypass the multi-factor authentication. So if you are saying that I'll deploy two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication, attackers are basically getting more and more creative in order to basically fetch these particular data like they are using techniques like adversary in the middle phishing attacks and they are even using token abuse to gain the access to the organization's data there are basically phishing kits which are being now made very much easier thanks to uh, generative ai have you guys heard about warm gpt have you ever heard about fraud gpt Have you ever heard about dark bot? So these are top three AI engines generative AI engines, which basically are being abused by cyber criminals in order to basically create macros, create malicious scripts, create exploits, create crowd, even create phishing kits. So now just one person needs a prompt and access to this generative AI and they can design a phishing kit customized to your environment. So now it has become easier for the threat actors to steal the credentials. So managing the identity attacks, basically uh, identity attack surface is one of the major parts because nowadays identity is everything I would say in a very layman term identity is everything. And if I do talk about the threat landscape of this particular identity or the attack surface, of this identity now we are basically in a situation where we are either uh, having a digital identity or we die so that kind of thing is basically already there and identity like is something now you all might have seen right that in last one year there are lots of layoff i am giving one simple example you all might have seen that in last one year there were a lot of layoffs of the workforce now see one person does have multiple identities within the organization to access multiple assets. Now, how come we can be so assured that there was no gap which was hindering our security defenses when these particular layoffs were being confirmed. So that is one thing. Identity is the heart of it, I would say. So people all those machine identities, your business systems, everything is basically increasing and credential theft is basically one of the major things which have been uh, there, right? And if I do talk about credential theft, it remains the number one as a concern for any cybersecurity professional in 2023 because the breach again is now uh, the breaches have been again taken with the help of the AI powered systems now phishing kits are being generated there are certain pretext which are being done with the help of ais a lot of things basically have been made so uh, realistic for the people that are so realistic for the systems that i identifying that it is basically the truly the same person who is trying to access the data is authorized or not is basically now become uh, a questionable thing right and 89 percent of the organizations indicates that they were being targeted by at least one of these identity based attacks which later would have been uh, concluded into another types of attacks like ransomware attacks and all other things so this is the data i'm talking about last one month sorry last one year
so this is something which we have to think of and we have to work upon in order to work in terms of identity and identity is something which is very important for the organization then we do come to our third point that is endpoints so and one thing which i do believe that don't you guys think that shadow it have been increased and these uh, endpoint especially endpoint blind spot have basically even increased like there is sheer number of devices in today's uh, environment is in hybrid environment right so securing endpoints have become more challenging for us than ever what has not changed is securing that endpoints it is always basically there like unmanaged devices put, uh, particularly is what uh, quite critical for the organization's security posture right as you said data privacy and all the data people basically exposing uh, doing some uh, practices for their ease of work which are not in favorable of the security of the organization uh, brings again the call to the shadow it right so organizations have embraced nowadays byods right so nowadays you might have seen there is a lot of byod policies unmanaged devices are basically being uh, entertained within the network environment and the endpoint attack surface is now larger than and larger and more exposed so on an average uh, there were like this is again the figure which i'm bringing it uh, from one of the news resources that there were 30 there are basically 3500 connected devices in an enterprise that are not being protected by endpoint detection and response agents so generally people do work on the things uh, which are or people do use the things which are not being even added to your edr and as someone said yesterday said it yesterday right so in order to basically your tool to help you you should help your tool in order to collect the data now what if if you do have a device in your environment which is connected to your environment but none of that particular device's activity is being logged anywhere so these unmanaged devices which are part of shadow it's right people which have used it for their ease of access are particularly the very much appealing threat actors uh, are very much appealing to the threat actors because security team lacks the visibility and uh, which is necessary for them to secure right and as per the microsoft's report which i have read uh, 71% are basically more likely to be infected device all of these unmanaged devices right devices which are being used by people to access the organization's network which is not an organization device so these are basically 70% of them basically are being infected already and since they connect to the company's network the unmanaged devices always basically are the opportunities for the attackers in order to launch the attacks on the infrastructure so that is one of the major parts which we do have endpoints now since we have basically increased our part or our area internet of things iot devices are also growing exponentially right and since this this is basically one of the field which is growing exponentially so are iot threats those are also growing exponentially so one of the most overlooked overlooked part if i do talk about an entire attack surface is endpoint attack vectors uh, in terms of iot so it includes billions of devices both large and small iot devices and uh, generally organizations are not even concerned for these particular iot devices so iot security covers your physical uh, devices that are connected to or exchange the data within the network like routers printers camera or similar devices like a person wearing a smartwatch it's quite uh, normal uh, for a person wearing smartphone coming to your enterprise premises now there are basically they are also always do connected to your environment as well 
isn't it and since they are they are basically connected to your environment so what if attackers basically do control that particular device to get inside your premises so i'm not just talking about iot but ot also right operational devices like sensors and all of those ones operational technology like smart equipment uh, especially being used in your manufacturing or production lines right those are also growing uh, a growing uh, threat vector for attackers for us and for attackers a growing opportunity to get inside the premises since the iot devices are growing the number of vulnerabilities are also growing by 2025 i'm talking about there was one prediction which was being done that 41 billion iot devices will be present within the enterprise and consumer environments and since many of the organizations basically are hardening their routers or network to make them more difficult for the attack threat actors to breach a simple iot devices are becoming uh, like a, can basically become an easier path for the attackers to target and to get inside your premises if nothing works they can basically use these iot devices like even we have already seen threat actors basically exploiting the vulnerabilities into iot devices into proxies they are turning the iot devices into proxies and using them using those particular export device as a exposed device as a part of a holding a foothold into the network attackers have gained access let's say uh, once the attacker have gained access to the iot device right so they can monitor the network traffic they can basically uh, identify any sort of unprotected assets to move literally into the uh, network or to move literally in order to basically infiltrate the organization's infrastructure or to perform internal reconnaissance to plan a large scale attack against the organization so multiple things basically can be done and we have already seen attackers using these iot devices a lot right so iot is basically a black box for the organization in terms of visibility because there is no proper iot security measures being adopted by every organization and that is one of the major problems as or it will be basically one of the major attack surface areas for you as a cso which can be taken care of right because iot and ot security is as important as the other aspects of your it and ot infrastructure so this is basically one of the major things again then if i do talk about number 5th i believe this is something which all of you might be knowing right drastic change basically we have seen in the environment where cloud basically is every small or big every organization is using cloud serv services be it uh, infrastructure be it platform be it function be it software but in one way or another we are basically using cloud services a lot now protecting the cloud is both critical and complex for the organization because with this moving infrastructure the application development the workloads i would say like uh, the massive amount of data is basically being moving to the cloud right and securing the cloud environment means defending range of services including your saas pas ias and that too distributed across multiple clouds so the breadth and the distribution of services is a lot and it can be difficult for the organization to get the proper level of visibility and to protect each at different layer that's why uh, just wanted to let you guys know that that's why we are also coming for like a ciso awareness program on the cloud security so that is something which will be basically exploring and which will be emphasizing in this particular cloud path so we will be coming with that so stay tuned with us if anyone basically wants to look cloud as a increasing attack surface in their environment and get want to know more details inside it so it uh, that particular workshop can be helpful to you guys so there are like i would say there are still many organization which gain struggles to get end to end visibility in their uh, i would say production environment that is on prem but now when we do cloud talk about cloud it becomes more harder especially when data increases uh, 
in the cloud side right and that too in the multiple clouds or hybrid environments so there can be lack of visibility which can be a security gap and which attackers can basically take control of and can attack there are basically 84 percent of the organizations who have suffered ransomware attack because they did not integrate their entire multi-cloud assets with their security tools so this was basically a negligence which basically caused them a ransomware attack so i hope all of you do know a shift left approach shift left security approach right so shift left security approach is basically one of the major things which you might have seen that organizations have adopted it is basically one of the major parts where now we are basically moving towards like the very initial designing or development phase right so now we do not wait for our product to be designed to be uh, created upon and then basically working upon it instead what we have done is now we are basically moving towards the security in the very beginning rather than security being an afterthought so this is what we do call as shift left approach now when we do talk about clouds what we can do is we can basically move towards the same this uh, shift left approach and uh, that means basically incorporating security thinking in the earlier stages of your application development right so it can help the organization to strengthen their security posture and to avoid any sort of critical vulnerabilities in the very first place right so when when you are basically developing a cloud application or you are integrating it with your cloud with shift left approach you can basically get started in order to basically determine your attack vectors at the very starting stage of your cloud deployment yesterday i did mention the octas uh, hack right so securing the external attack surface is basically and uh, you can say similar to internet scale challenge right because external can be anything an organization's external attack surface basically can be via multiple clouds complex digital supply chains right third party ecosystems multiple things right and internet is now a part of your network right so I would say being uh, internet as one of the most biggest, one of the biggest insecure system in size, security teams have to basically connect to internet to defend their organization's presence throughout the internet to a same level as they are, uh, everything is behind their firewalls, right? So organizations are adopting for the same reason organization because external attack surface no matter whether it's coming from internal or the external that's the reason organizations are adopting zero trust which is protecting both internal and external surface attack surface areas right and when i do talk about the global attack surface with the internet it is expanding every day right like we have seen uh, the increase uh, in basically types of threats like phishing attacks or be it ransomware attacks and others have been basically drastically increased right so external attack surface is something which is again quite important right there was basically one report which was being uh, done by one organization which basically revealed that 53 percent of the organizations had experienced at least one breach which has been caused by third party in last two years and the cost average cost to basically remediate those threats was 7.5 million dollars so this is something which is quite important as well right so these are six major factors email identity endpoint internet cloud and external which we have to take care of when we do talk about increasing attack surface so our next part is guys basically understanding the current threat landscape the same part which we were talking about it in previous slide right are increased uh 
i would say attack surface or increased with our increased attack surface or increased attack surface leads towards our current threat landscape so threat landscape as we all do know that it is basically something where we do look upon the current threats of our organization right and our current threat landscape is constantly changing and as an organization we need to uh, create our security strategies that can keep up to that constant change and increased i would say organizational complexity and exposure basically have uh, is basically one of the major reasons right uh, the organization's ex uh, complexity and exposure to the internet to the unsecure network is one of the major reasons for a high volume threat right and it is becoming more urgent than ever to secure every single seam within our organization's infrastructure and our attack surface so here are certain figures if you do see these figures are from, from 2023 only activity which was being detected for 41 out of 138 apt groups have been identified by mitre that these attacks are basically focused and planned and also are basically coming in terms of waves so this is something which is where apts are also basically giving us a alarming threats if i do talk about the very first quarter of 2023 the ransomware attacks have been basically like i'm talking about the attacks which are which were being basically targeted uh were like from past 13 percent to now 22 percent there are 13 times higher than it basically becomes and organizations that were successfully able to detect ransomware have decreased from 22 percent to 13 percent because now attacks are getting more sophisticated and more targeted and as i said in the previous slide also ics ot attacks right they have also basically taken the hype you can see up over here from january to june the chart basically shows that the increase in attack from 0.39% to 0.2.7% to, to the ics and ot attacks have been increased and if we do talk about the endpoints 0.6% since last half we are basically seeing uh, endpoints endpoint vulnerabilities basically are been targeted by the attackers and this is something which is quite steady so we can see this particular part up over here time to exploit 327 times basically it's more likely to be attacked by the attackers and these are the insights right as per the mitre attack like all the uh, using the detection technologies we have observed that two-third of the all known mitre attack techniques were being used in first half of 2023 so now you are seeing that two third of the mitre attack techniques mitre attack does have more than i would say including sub techniques and techniques there are more than 500 so two third of them were being used to do the to carry out the attacks now how easy and how difficult it could be for us to go through all of these particular mitre attack like techniques there is in front of us what attackers are doing from that we can understand the pattern we can map it to our organization we can operationalize mitre attack framework for our organization in order to basically understand the techniques which are being used by the attackers and apt groups so mitre is one of the important parts and if i do talk about our current threat landscape so it is basically as i said it's quite uh, alarming for us because there was a survey which was being recently conducted by Fortinet, which basically says that 70% of the leaders who claim that their enterprise were prepared of attacks and half of them were victims to a simple RAS attack, ransomware as a service attack. So we do know that we can be secured or we are secure, but we never know until and unless attackers basically do attack us and bypass our controls right so that's why proactiveness is one of the very important part and using mitre it can be quite important for us because we have seen in past this entire year 
uh, from January to June 2023, we have observed that activities which these threat actors have done. So they are basically doing multiple activities which even include the genetic code analysis. They are creating malwares on the base of genetic code analysis where it is becoming more and more difficult for our existing tools to detect these type of malwares and that's why the organizations are getting compromised. So if you guys might have, even you guys might have heard about these groups which have made most of the noises like Ocean Lotus, Wild Neutron, Tula, Strong Pity. These were like few of the groups which have made a lot of noise and uh, the ones which were already there those are already from last nearly last two decades they are basically attacking multiple different sectors already and this russian ukraine conflict have raised a lot of apt groups to target the organizations from these particular geopolitical regions so that is one of the major parts and if i do talk about the top ransomwares which were there like which were uh, there in the market basically were Conti ransomware you all might have heard about there was there is this uh, the one which is going on and uh, uh, the Conti ransomware basically it was quite a bit famous and it has been attacked multiple organizations right then you might have heard about Lockbit and another type of it has recently attacked multiple different organizations including Deloitte so Deloitte has been reached nearly four there are majorly uh, big fours like Deloitte Deloitte has been reached by club and it has been reported that Deloitte is the, not the only one so three out of four big fours basically have been uh, breached by Klopp ransomware apart from KPMG all three of them basically were being breached but only the report basically which came out was from Deloitte so a lot of basically uh, ransomwares are there there are attacks like crypto miners they have been increased information stealers were already from there but still they are basically being increased and majorly you might have seen there are basically rats like Emotet, Agent Tesla, which have been increased in the market. So if I do talk about last five years trend, threat trend, I'll talk about the numbers. We have seen more than 40,000 unique variants of malware over last five years. And that too from more than 7,000 different families. If I do talk about exploit, more than 10,000 unique exploits have been detected and if i do talk about botnets like the ones which were being used to carry out the attack more than 100 or 200 plus i guess unique botnets were being detected in past four plus year five plus years so these are basically the numbers which we do have up till uh, this particular time up till the june of 2023 and now increased malware activity is basically they are also driving the organized cyber crimes so because these particular malware families and variants have exploded over internet so the num numbers which i said 44000 plus unique variants that's almost 135 percent hike over last five years in terms of families and 175 percent hike in terms of variants so number of malware families have basically been increased and the infiltration capabilities with each upcoming malware is becoming more precise more destructive for us as an organization so our current threat landscape is something which we have to look into in order to basically go ahead and identify where we are basically having the tools having the process having the people having the technology in place in order to detect these threats
so looking at our current threat landscape what we can do is we can implement more of a better security strategy we can implement more of things like powerful threat intelligence against these particular evolving threats we have to basically put more uh, intelligence that correlates to the uh, identification or early identification or early signal from these different places coming to us give us the information about the attack behavior and their trends so that our security teams can identify the vulnerabilities can prioritize the alerts and can disrupt the attacks right and even after all these things if the breach does occur our intel team basically can play a very critical role that it can basically prevent the further harm for us so that's why you might have seen microsoft have recently released copilot so with this advanced ai cap capabilities microsoft has released security copilot which can be basically help you to uh, like identify these type of evolving threats and be uh, make you at least like stay ahead of these particular threats and organizations basically are taking up to this particular game actually to go ahead go further and to identify and to stop the threats so that was guys about our current threat landscape how it looks like it's constantly changing and it's basically increasing like the number of threats are increasing our threat landscape is basically becoming more and more critical and dangerous for us than ever so there are lots of reports basically which are being released by multiple different vendors so as a CISO I believe those are one of the important factors which you guys can go through to make the decisions in order to basically plan your further security investments and in in order to plan your further decision making then why it becomes important for our for us basically to prioritize our security strategy and architecture like prioritizing security strategy and architecture it is basically the simple reason right the increasing sophistication and the frequency of cyber attacks it is more become um, important for us to prioritize our security strategy and architecture and few of the areas where we can focus i'll talk about those particular areas so few of the areas where we can focus is the very first one uh, is basically the security and when we do talk about security the very important thing nowadays which works in both cloud and on prem environment is zero trust so zero trust architecture is one of the security models where you will assume that no user or device is trusted by default and this means that all the accesses to the systems and data is being restricted and must have been must have be authenticated and authorized and it can help us it can basically zero trust can help us to protect the organizations from both external and internal attacks since we do have cloud security so when we do talk about security cloud is one of the major targets of cyber attack these days so it's important to have strong cloud security strategy in place which basically includes your data encryption your access controls your vulnerability scanning everything and third i would say uh, identity access management a uh, few slides back i did mention that identity is becoming more critical right so identity access management is one of the critical components and with this critical component it is basically becoming more important for us to access to uh, ensure that only authorized user does have access to the system and data right and it is basically one of the important things not only this if you do talk about the basics your data security is again equally important your one major part which i have told in the first slide today and i am telling you again is guys your security awareness training so this is something which is very important for us in order to basically prioritize our security strategy and architecture so 
how how we can basically uh, plan these things is that a very simple way to get started is start with risk assessment so risk assessment can help us to identify the most critical assets of our organization and the threats that they are basically facing it will help us to prioritize the security efforts right and uh, of course like your senior management right uh, your C CTOs or your CEOs right security is everyone's responsibility this is something which is very important and we have to basically include our senior management to support to make sure that the security is the top priority i would say invest in the right tools and right uh, solutions right there are wide range of security tools and solutions available in the market so it's quite important to choose the ones which are right for your organization of course after talking all this layered security approach is one of the major things which can keep uh, us uh, like us uh, secured in multiple layers and that can help us to basically increase our attackers time in order to get inside our premises and so that we can detect them on time of course like we can have a good threat intel database which will keep up with the latest security threats it will basically give us all the information about the latest threats and vulnerabilities because the threat landscape we discussed in our last slide is constantly evolving right so that can be implemented we can always basically have our teams in place to test and monitor our security controls like the red teams basically can go ahead can plan an uh, attack which is basically being unplanned to check the response time of the organization and uh, to uh, assess the security of the organization even we can have plan for responding to cyber attacks we can create uh, i would say sops which can help the organization to go ahead and to identify what is more important for us so if i do talk about these on the right hand side which you are seeing these five points right analyze plan deploy measure optimize so i would say your security efforts your strategies and your architecture right prioritizing this basically it's a cyclic process and when we do talk about the cyclic process we do always do come over here with multiple different parts like plans with plans we can what we can do is we can plan our multiple roadmaps for our security for example planning awareness programs right uh, planning basically helps us to anticipate and address our roadblocks so we can basically bring up all the problem statements and we can plan that what we will be uh, doing in order to basically evolve from these particular problem statement and to resolve these problem statements we can stick to our timelines we can plan our roi our budget and ultimately we can basically design our path that how we will be working so that is one of the important part plan but before plan there is one thing which does comes is analyze now cycle can basically go like this also and can go it's a cyclic process right so we have to come analyze i would say will be the very first part where what you are planning to do you will be needing an input right and that input will be coming from the analyze part so when we do talk about analysis a thorough analysis of the situation of the infrastructure of the sector it has to be done for example we need to think that what sort of attackers will be interested in our organization how highly they will be motivated in our organization what sort of capabilities they would have so we need to basically analyze the situation who will attack us and why they will do attack us then we need to plan that what sort of data we need to collect against them then we need to basically deploy our teams in place in order to basically start collecting the data we need to measure and test that particular data within our organization that uh, that this particular data how using this particular skills this particular tools these particular techniques we need to map or measure that particular data as per our organizations depending on our infrastructure with those particular techniques and skills how attackers can basically attack we need to identify that in terms of measuring 
and after that of course we have to optimize we have to learn that how attackers can leverage our current existing tools current existing controls and they can get inside so that we can optimize ourselves before the attackers do try to attack us so this is basically a cyclic process which will be keep on always going right and it is quite important for us in order to basically understand this entire cycle of prioritizing our security strategy and architecture and cyber security awareness or i would say cyber security overall is everyone's business not just the ciso that is one of the important things so it's a coordinated effort which a, an organization can make and which can be basically useful for the organization since our if i do basically talk about like by prioritizing our security strategy and architecture organizations like us we can reduce the risk of our cyber attacks and protect our valuable assets right so these are like few of the things which we can do and when we do talk about security security is one of the important aspects we have talked about that we can go for zero trust architecture cloud security data security multiple things strategies we can basically make in terms of levels of access to be given in terms of basically uh, layered approach we can basically create a strategy of that continuous monitoring basically can be again being used and architecture is basically the environment which we will be using so if i do talk about cisos as the terms of uh, with the help of securities we need to basically ensure that organizations are secure from cyber attacks by implementing controls now controls basically we do know that there are prevention controls detection controls and i would say even remediation controls right so security controls like firewall ids ips antivirus edrs these can be quite important right so it's not just only for you but you need to educate your employees on the best practices uh and how to identify and report to the suspicious activities this will be your duty your job to basically educate your employees then if i do talk about strategy you need to basically plan how to protect your organization from cyber attacks that is one of the major things then i would say you need to basically make a plan now that plan has to be keep it in mind that had plan has to be based on your organization's risk profile and should be regularly reviewed and updated as per your organization's expectation and it will be a step by step approach for responding to cyber threats like and even basically it might involve your dr activities if nothing basically goes in the right how we can recover from that disaster and from architecture point of view we need to ensure that our organization's it architecture is secure by designing the systems with security in always in mind and with shift left approach i believe implementing security at the very starting in niche phase of our application development is one of the important parts right so implementing controls throughout the it infrastructure and ensuring that the organizations are compliant with applicable regulatory and cyber security regulations these are one of the most important things for us as a ciso so security strategy architecture and prioritization of these will help us in order to basically protect our business from evolving cyber threats so this is the part then i would say the very important and uh, even the very next topic for us automation automate cyber so as i said guys automation like it's clearly being said right that the only constant in cyber security is change right and the very next change which we all do know is basically the automation and adoption of automation in security requires a shift in thinking of us for the organization because we are the face of the organization so in thinking of ciso's of the organization 
it is basically a change to the entire organization. Of course, it has been a change. Now, security team needs to be educated on the benefits of automation because what mostly your employees does have an impact is that automation is going to replace them. So it's not basically one of the necessities because automation can be used for the benefits and how it can improve the security posture of the organization. This knowledge has to be passed on to your teammates. And once security teams are on board, you as a CISO, you can start implementing the automated solutions that will help to improve the efficiency of your organization. Very first thing that will help to reduce the risk of human error within your organization that will even help to basically you can say so uh, reduce the uh, uh, like overall entire security posture of your organization right so these are major things where it will be helping in fulfilling our goal in terms of automation right so that is one of the important parts and uh, educating your team giving them the strategic opportunities once basically freed from more technical processes what they can think of what added benefit they can basically bring to the table of the organization how automated tooling will reduce uh, the headcount to basically required to manage the cyber security efforts and how repetitive task can basically being ignored this is the importance which you need to showcase to your team so because all of these things will free up the security teams time to focus on more strategic initiative this will definitely improve efficiency will reduce the risk of human error and overall improve the security posture of the organization and there are basically number of different ways that automation can be used in cyber security so vulnerability management is one of the things like an automated vulnerability scanner can be used to identify and prioritize the vulnerabilities in the organization's system and network which can help us to reduce the risk of exploitation by the attackers right if it has been automated in a proactive manner it will be automatically scanning the infrastructure and can be quite helpful right then response time as you said right incident response automated incident response tools like SOAR can be used to collect and analyze the data from your security incident and uh, we can even automate the remediation of the vulnerability to our, or other incidents to a certain extent so this will definitely help us to speed up the response time to the incidents and will reduce the damage which has been caused isn't it then yeah. another thing which i believe uh, is quite useful is compliance checking now compliances we do know that uh, checking of those particular compliances can be quite tough right or can be quite a tedious process so automated compliance checking tools can be used to verify that the organization is in compliance with the industry regulations or not so this can help us to avoid the costly fines and the penalties right so these are like few of the example not only these there can be a lot of things for example log management so automated log management can be used to collect store and analyze our security logs right and it can help us to identify suspicious activities and to investigate those incidents uh, we can have asset management right automated asset management tools can be used to track and uh, make an inventory of all of our assets that are belonging to the organization's IT environment and this can help us to identify the vulnerability if any vulnerable uh, asset is there in our environment and, to, and even it can help us to ensure that all the assets are properly secured patch management even automated patch management tools can be used to deploy the critical security patches or even security patches to all the system at once and the application in the organization's environment. So again, risk of exploitation by the attackers, it can be re reduced, right? 
so overall instead of thinking security uh, automation or automating the cyber uh, for our employees as a challenge or as a opposition what we can do is we can bring the same automation for our teams right rather than making them making it for them as a challenge or as a opposition we can basically use the same things to educate them the benefits of automation and to tell them that how we can basically improve our scalability of our cyber security solutions with the help of automations because as organizations grow and their it environment is be, uh, be, uh, becomes more complex it basically becomes more difficult to manage the security manually right and automation can help us to address this challenge by providing a scalable solution that can be easily adapted to change the needs of the organization and overall i would say automation not now but maybe uh, but not maybe but definitely in future it is going to be a critical component of an effective cyber security strategy and by automating re repetitive task definitely security teams can free up time to focus on more strategic initiatives which can improve the efficiency of the team reduce the errors and overall of course improve our security posture and scalability of our solutions so this is one of the major things of security automation